Hello students, in this video we'll compute the determinant of a van der Maan matrix. Let's consider, as an, a preliminary step, consider the problem of computing the determinant of 1 a, a squared 1 b, b squared 1 c, c squared. And so what we'll do is we'll do elementary row operations. I'll do row 1 minus row 2, I'll do negative row 1 plus row 2, and negative row 1 plus row 3. So if we do, by row operations, negative row 1 plus row 2, and then negative row 1 plus row 3, what will we get? We'll get the determinant of 1a, a squared, and then 0, and then b minus a, and then b squared minus a squared, and then 0, c minus a, c squared minus a squared, like so. And now, this is just going to be the determinant of this, uh, if I expand along the first column over here, I'm just going to have this determinant over here. So this is going to be the determinant of b minus a, and then b minus a, b plus a by factoring, and then c minus a, and then c minus a, and then c minus c plus a, like that, okay? Now there's a common factor of b minus a in the first row, so by elementary row operations I can pull that b minus a out, I can pull that c minus a out as well, so this just becomes what? This just becomes b minus a, c minus a, and then times the determinant of 1, 1, b plus a, c plus a, and therefore that's going to be a c plus a minus b plus a. The a's cancel out and this just becomes a c minus b. So this is going to be b minus a, c minus a, and then c minus b. And now what we can notice from, from this calculation over here is what I have over here is I have the variable in the bottom row, the c, is subtracted from both a, a row above it, and b, a row above it, and b is subtracted from a row above it. So what we're going to do is we're going to conjecture that this pattern holds in general. So with the conjecture now, our conjecture theorem, is that if we look at this more general matrix, determinant of 1, a1, all the way down to a1 to the n minus 1, all the powers of a, so in other words, the second one would be a1 squared, 1, a2, all the way down to a2 to the n minus 1, we go down to 1, a n, all the way to a n to the n minus 1, that this determinant over here, because this is the determinant of a van der Maan matrix, so these are van der Maan matrix. is equal to the product 1 less than or equal to i, strictly less than j, less than or equal to n, of the deeper number, aj, minus the higher row. So the lower row minus the higher row over all possible row column configurations. Let's see how we prove this. So this theorem is true. Note this is true if n is equal to 3, for example. So we're going to prove this by induction. So assume this is true for j, which is strictly less than or equal to n minus 1, right? We'll try to prove it's true for n, right? And so what we're going to do is we're going to introduce an auxiliary function over here. Let's define p of x to be the determinant 1a1 one a1 to the n minus 1, 1, a2, a2 to the n minus 1. And then I go down to row n, everything stays the same to row level n minus 1, n minus 1 to the n minus 1. And then in row n, I'm going to put variables. I'm going to have an x, an x squared, all the way down to x to the n minus 1, okay? Like so. So now this is a function of x. Now this function of x is a polynomial of degree n minus 1. This is a polynomial of degree n minus 1. So this is a polynomial, okay? And now furthermore, what can I say about, for example, p of a1? Well, if I plug in x equals a1, then the, then the nth row and the first row will be the same. So this is going to be 0. This is 0. If we look at a2, p of a2 is going to be equal to 0, right? Because if I plug in a2, the second row and the last row are the same. 
all the way down to what? P of a n minus 1. Well, then the nth row and the n minus first row are, equal, are the same, so you get 0. So since it's a polynomial of degree n minus 1, and these numbers a1 through a n, I should, I should mention, of course, that I want these numbers over here to be distinct, right? So otherwise it's trivial, right? Otherwise it's just 0, right? So I found all of the roots of this polynomial, so my polynomial can be factored as what? As just some constant c times x minus a1 all the way down to x minus a n minus 1. Like that. Great. And now what is that coefficient? That c is the coefficient of x to the n minus 1. So c is the coefficient of x to the n minus 1. But that coefficient of x to the n minus 1, this is a Vandermond matrix. This is equal to the determinant. And of course, since we're in, we're, this is the, the sign of this element over here is a positive, the cofactor sign is a positive number, right? Because you're in row n and column n, so you have n plus n, which is 2n, that's even parity, right? Determinant of an n minus 1 by n minus 1 Vandermond. So we can use the induction hypothesis which is equal to what? Which is equal to the product, what? Of 1 less than or equal to i less than j less than or equal to n minus 1 of a j minus a i. And then when I plug in p of a n, p of a n is going to be what? That's going to be, so p of a n is our determinant. So p of a n is what we want. So that's when I plug in a n over here. That's going to be equal to what? That's going to be equal to a n, a n minus 1, a n minus a 1, all the way down to what? All the way down to a n minus a n minus 1, which is the, of the right form of larger row minus smaller row, times those leftover terms by the induction hypothesis, 1 less than or equal to i, less than j, less than or equal to n minus 1, of terms that we want, a j minus a i. And I can compactify this expression over here into exactly what we have, and that proves the theorem. Thank you very much.